inside America's boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries, brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC, along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and your host for today's show. Today we're going to be talking about the five must-know subject matter issues for compensation committee members. And joining me is somebody that has lived this life in compensation for over 30 plus years working with companies. Welcome, Bob Romanchek, who's a partner with Meridian Compensation Partners. Welcome, Bob. Yeah, so TK, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you back again. So this time, though, we're going to look at something very unique. We're going to say, we're going to assume that either somebody is just joining a compensation committee board or needs a refresher on compensation committees. And we want to look at sort of the five issues or five, what you've, called categories, okay, of where somebody needs a knowledge base if they're going to serve on this committee. So I'm right. turn it over to you. Let's hear what you have to say. Very good. Yes. And uh, trying to put five together, I came up with a whole lot more. Uh, the most important thing is an executive compensation. So as you mentioned, I've created categories. And the first category, before we get to executive compensation specific related items, there are what I call situational facts that you really do need to become an expert in. So first and foremost, the obvious one, the actual executive compensation plans and programs, you need to do an inventory of those plans and programs, but it's beyond just having the plans in, in hand. You have to understand how they operate, the history, the rationale. Matter of fact, up front, when we get involved, first thing we do is sit down one-on-one -on -one with the individual executives for that very reason, to understand the rationale and the operation of the programs. And it could be you are designing things that are different than the external market, yet there's a very good reason for that in rationale and history. So you've got to unpack it a little bit. Secondly, you really do need to obviously understand the business strategy of the company. The executive compensation plans and programs to be effective need to reflect that strategy, both short and long term, and the strategy changes. Certainly you can look at the CEO letter and the glossy report or the 10K, the business explanation, but it really does change on an ongoing basis. So you need to do more than that to really understand what that strategy is to make sure you've got good alignment. And to understand that, you've got to talk to the people. So there are some very important parties involved when you're a comp committee member that you need to make those relationships and understand their perspectives. So for example, large shareholders are very significant, but the retail investor also is important to understand the different reasons why they're investing in the company and how they could relate uh, specifically to the goals and the incentive programs. Uh, also, the comp committee members and other board members, clearly these are folks, many of them retired CEOs or high-level executives, uh, have very good experience and knowledge, and they're going to have perspectives that are going to come to the table here when you're designing the plans and programs. So you really do need to have interaction with those folks. And of course, the management team that's actually running operations, uh, clearly getting their perspectives. Matter of fact, they typically have more input on programmatic design and executive compensation than the board does. Because they're living that on a daily basis, important to interact with them. And finally, although this is not thought of as much, but literally company employees, and you might want to bring this down to distinctive groups or geographic locations, the culture and the directional, the aspects of what you're trying to achieve with the organization, that does leverage down from the exec comp program to all employee programs. So, so, that, so that's all number one. Number one, right. But the reason that that's so comprehensive is that's sort of setting the foundation exactly. of what you need to know. Okay, right, so let's right. hear from here. So plan, strategy, people, and then the environment, operating environment is one more item there that you need to understand what's happening externally that's impacting it. So looking at item number two, it's really the process for executive compensation. And of late, the last number of years, the process in exec comp has become as important as the substance and all the technical rules. Uh, days have changed. We are typically at every board meeting, whether we're consulting uh, on the fly or actually presenting things, 
a lot of focus now on executive compensation, a lot of attention, and the process is really critical. So you really need to understand what's on the calendar, what the meeting cadence is, what, what topics are coming up at what session, and those reoccur from year to year very often. The charter that you are subjected to actually lays out your specific duties and responsibilities. Uh, who's involved with the meetings also will dictate some of the meeting process. Uh, and the filing dates. So when you're filing your proxy and other filings from the SEC, knowing that whole calendar and process, uh, very critical. So who approves what, the comp committee or the board? Uh, all of that goes into process. So that would be the second item that clearly, that you should have that laid out and very clear calendar, uh, the agenda, and uh, the items that I just mentioned. Third item, and here's where typically you would jump, coming up what are the five most important items, it's really the content and the analysis. So starting from the basis, you need a peer group uh, where that is a relevant peer group uh, for you and your industry, the size and location. Proxy advisory firms have their own peer groups. That's a consideration, certainly not controlling. But with that peer group that you identify that's relevant, you'll be collecting data, value, pay data value in design practices. That doesn't dictate what you're gonna do pay or design wise, but it makes you informed from business judgment perspective. So you can make an informed decision knowing rest, what the rest of the relevant world is doing is gonna help you then in your decision making process. So having that content, and that carries you on to actual pre program design. Very important, the biggest pay components, short term incentive and long term incentive programs, a great preponderance of executive pay, and that's where you get the pay for performance leak. Uh, you need to understand what the connection is uh, to the executive and then to shareholders with that pay for performance leak. There's a number of additional items in this content area. You know, for example, shareholder guidelines, um, realized or realizable pay calculations versus simply what's recorded in the proxy statement, dilution, share pool analysis, a lot of content there that happens within that category. So let me pause there and uh, I'm gonna switch to the next category. We may be able to come back to that, we'll see. And then finally, you get to the re regulations that are specific to the executive compensation area. So a number of years ago, we had Sarbanes-Oxley that had exec comp related issues. More currently, although it seems like a lifetime already, Dodd-Frank, where we had the CEO pay ratio and the hedging and the clawback, pay for performance requirements, still not finalize all those. Yet you need to understand what those are. Uh, in addition to the accounting, the different accounting aspects for the exec comp program, clearly you don't need to be an accounting expert. That's where you have your professionals come in in the details, but do understand there are different accounting implications which impacts reportable earnings. Same thing with the tax rules. Different tax programs, there's different uh, tax implications. Special rules, the 162M, uh, a, one, a million dollar deduction uh, rules, the deferred comp rules, a 409A, uh, there's uh, 280G for change of control, FICA rules. Once again, these all have very material impacts on design. You need to be aware of them, not necessarily details, yet those are important going through the exec comp plans and programs. Finally, my fifth category, and of course last, maybe least, are the proxy advisory firms. You know, times have changed. I think you've got to consider uh, their guidance and uh, their, how they're grading you. Important to look at past reports that they issued to determine where the issues are. These are not controlling. They should not be controlling. Good to understand what those issues are. Uh, yet, I would certainly go to your large shareholders. Uh, shareholder outreach right now today is standard fare. So you've got to really get that down pat who's gonna be involved, who's gonna give the presentations, uh, what you're going to cover, and get input and feedback back during the calendar year, not when the year is over. So trying to take the proxy firms out of the middle uh, is, is very important and good practice, yet you've gotta consider you know, what they have to say and, and what their guidelines are. So um, it is interesting that um, uh, you mentioned sh the shareholder engagement Shareholders do not want to hear about CEO pay from either the CEO or from the uh, consultant or from the HR person. Exactly. They want to hear from either the chair, most logically the chair of the comp committee, mm -hmm. okay, or at least a member of that. So yes. do you have to, do you spend time doing prep work with somebody who's going to be in front of investors as well? Yeah, they're exactly correct. Uh, your big shareholders, they don't want to hear from the consultant or the CEO. It is the lead director primarily in the comp committee chair. 
Uh, those folks usually don't like doing this from the get-go. They're uncomfortable. It's something they, they usually don't do. You typically have an investor relations group that does that shareholder outreach in other areas. So this is a more recent development where you need to do executive compensation-based outreach, and it really is the comp committee that needs to do that. So, And some of those you can do via telephonic uh, means. However, the big shareholders, particularly if you've got an issue or not great performing TSR, you're going to probably have to do some live uh, in-person meetings. It's uh, It adds a skill set to the chairman of the comp committee that, that you didn't have to worry about in the past. Uh, all of a sudden, they have to have presentation skills as well. Yeah, along with that, those situational facts beyond just compensation, you know, clearly there's a range of additional skills now being a comp committee member that you have to have. Well, Bob, um, I, I can't believe that you got <laughs> those five categories into the 10 minutes, but I hope somebody can listen closely because they're all sort of fundamental foundational issues that are necessary in today's world for serving on the comp committee. Right. And it's, it's a very complex assignment and it's probably is shared now with the complexity of being on the audit committee as well. Absolutely. So right. thank you for taking the time to join us and uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have you back again. Right, pleasure being here, thank you. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic It'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you there. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.